And welcome everyone to the final part of Let's Play Street Fighter 2 The World Warriors. I am yours, of course, Mr. Espinoza X. And um, continue on with my story, uh, pretty much of my experience with the competitive scene. Um, I would enter pretty much mostly at just this one local uh, pizza parlor um, slash arcade uh, place. It's pretty much, you know... In the inside, once you go inside the place, there's like all the arcade cabinets that they have like on each end of the wall, pretty much. And there's like tables in the middle to where, you know, where people would eat and stuff. So in a sense, it's kind of like a small Chuck E. Cheese, if anything. Um, and then, of course, like in the front, there's, you know, you know, the window, the register to, you know, to order all your stuff which is just like pizza not only pizza but like you know they have like potato wedges um you know pretty much like in a way shakies as well and stuff but they make it way differently and stuff they also have like other things besides like pizza they have like french fries and um, um pretty much ice cream if anything so yeah um and you know every time i answer there every single one just at the street fighter arcade cabinet in line like ignoring pretty much all the uh other um arcade cabinets that were in there and stuff and then of course you know they decided to like start like a tournament and that's where i mostly enter all my lo all the local tournaments that i would go to especially for like street fighter more rollers capcom um tekken at one point um and um just pretty much any other fighting games also hold like like a retro thing where uh they would like do like pac-man whoever like beats so you know the world record or something like that um and stuff so yeah but uh i've won at least three playing the world warriors um the prizes i got were mostly a trophy and a free voucher to free pizza and um i mean they didn't start giving out money until maybe around the time i believe i think hyper fighting came out or i think was champions edition i really don't remember i think or i think maybe it was like around the new challengers if anything um i think they only gave out maybe um since it was just mostly like kids and young adults they would like at least give out like only a hundred a hundred dollars they raise it to 200 um later on and stuff so yeah um i think when i've I've won a total of five tournaments in that area, three of them being in the in the World Warriors, um, and I'll talk about the other uh, the other two um, in the, once we reach the other Street Fighter Two games. So yeah, um, but yeah, um, I never kept my trophies because you know there were just those trophies that pretty much you know like if you ever like been in like a local like little league soccer team or baseball team it was those type of trophies so you know i you know never kept them because you know the screws were loose and everything um it was funny because i remember my uncle had owned a uh a local a local little league soccer uh league and stuff just he just pretty much like organizes everything and you know sets up the matches and he had one person i guess make the trophies but i guess he found a better job so what happened was he you know called me i think it was like around when i was like maybe 15 maybe 16 i don't remember how old was i but uh yeah he called me saying that he'll pay me at least maybe Twenty dollars for each trophy, and um, they were pretty big. You know, there were like a lot of trophies that I had to make and stuff. So you know, I literally would probably make like around maybe fifteen or fourteen trophies a day, the at the least. Um, the minimum would be like a, maybe just like three, maybe five trophies if anything so yeah it was a really good job and stuff so i mean I'm, i i know i got a little off topic but i'm just saying like if i um you know i could have probably learned how to screw that trophy and i probably would have kept my 
Street Fighter uh, trophy that I won from that piece of place. So I'm just saying. But anyway, now we are facing off against the four bosses in Street Fighter. We are facing off against first Balrog, the boxer. Um, we're in Las Vegas. Next, and after that, we'll be facing off against the uh, narcissist assassin, um, Vega from Spain. And then after that, we face off against Sagat again. Yes, Sagat from the first Street Fighter. Um, he's come back for revenge on Ree for giving him the scar on his chest and then after that we face off against the main boss and we won't talk about him yet until we reach him and stuff but for now we are facing off against Balrog now when you're playing the arcade port for this game the bosses in this game will be way way harder especially once you reach Vega but first Balrog's pretty tough. He really is. Um, it took me a while to understand him. You know, all the stuff that he does and stuff. But uh, he was pretty easy as soon as I, you know, played this game again. Like, probably like a, like a couple times and stuff. And um, he... All you just really have to do is, you know, rely on defense. And then sometimes he'll charge at you with the with his fists. So the best way to do that, because he, when he does that move... He'll be left open so just throw so if your character has like a projectile move then go for it um but if your character doesn't then i would just recommend just blocking so you're going to rely pretty much on defense once you reach the four main bosses of this game now anyway we defeated balrog now we're facing off against vega from spain oh my god i can just say one thing i love vega steam just listen to it It's great. Oh my god, dude. It's literally great. Um, I think Vega's theme is literally at least top five um, of my favorite themes from this game. Uh, one being Ryu, number two being Ken's, number three being Guile, four Vega, of course. Number five, actually, I like Balrog's theme too. Bal I do love Balrog's theme and stuff, so yeah. Um,. But yeah, okay, so Vega is a very quick character. He is lightning fast. So you have to be very careful. Again, rely on defense. And then sometimes he'll, le he'll just like Balrog, he'll start doing like charge moves at you. So best rely, and I got like a, and I lost by a time over. But best rely on, you know, if your character throws projectiles, then go ahead and do that and stuff. So yeah. But, uh, yeah, oh my god, dude, when I saw that these bosses, when the first time I played this game and then these bosses came out, I was, like, surprised. I'm like, oh, wow. It's like, you know, all these games with, like, you know, um, just one main boss and then this game just has four of them that you have to go through until you reach, you know, the main baddie. And it's just really awesome. I won't talk about the main baddie yet. So I'm just saying, but yeah, but, uh, yeah, um, but I mean, I missed a piece of place, honestly. Um, it, after, you know, pretty much after people just kind of like stopped going to arcades in general, I mean, not really a whole lot of people, you know, went anymore because of like all the online shop, like all the games being bought from the online store oh yeah by the way this is the uh another the final bonus stage um this one be very careful because there will be some flaming barrels so yeah if those flaming barrels touch you then you pretty much are i think uh i think i do oh never mind but it, just, just don't touch the flames but yeah um so that being said the reason you know nobody wins because that around that time that's when you know the whole shopping for games online literally happened and you know people just bought games from you know either the playstation store or xbox marketplace pretty much and um you know of course then they pretty much closed it down sadly i mean they tried to save it and everything but you know no nope, it didn't happen um they replaced that, you know, that whole lot with just like a Walmart with a parking lot. So, yeah. Sadly, that really sucks, you know, because I really do miss going to that place. But, 
Yeah, it, it happens, you know, like Blockbuster and your Netflix and all that, with Netflix killing Blockbuster and all that. I do believe with pretty much just downloading music or like iTunes killing uh, Tower Records. So you, the, the list goes on, you know, so yeah. But anyway, Fear Facing Against Sagat. And I can tell you guys, Sagat is a lot harder in this game because he is out for revenge on Ryu for giving him that scar. So yeah, um, Sagat and Ryu is just you know one of the popular rivalries in the whole Street Fighter series. So yeah. Anyway, whew, I barely defeated Sagat. Alrighty then. Now that we defeated Sagat, it is time. It is time to face off against the main bad of the whole Street Fighter series. Ladies and gentlemen, M. Bison, the dictator, the ruler of Shadow of an evil corporation called Shadowloo. This man is tough, and he has a power possessed in him called Psycho Powers. Pretty much, he with that powers, he's literally can just defy the laws of physics you do some crazy flips and everything that you thought you n would never happen and he also his his signature uh move called the psycho crusher oh my gosh you got to be careful with the psycho crusher in this game um so yeah but uh it, it once you play this game more you start understanding his pattern and all that so i mean the best way to do this is just pretty much rely on defense like i mentioned and stuff um and he just kind of stay away from him um pretty much because once you know you get close to him that's when he does his most damage so yeah uh, he doesn't have a projectile or anything but he does have the psycho crusher so you literally have to be careful with that either jump over if you can or if or just you know pretty much block it so yeah um but yeah he's really not i mean to me he wasn't really that hard. He isn't really that hard. Like I remembered. Oh my god. Am I, <gasps> I got a perfect on M. Bison. Holy crap. That's the first actually that I've ever done that. Besides uh, the other Street Fighter games. Dude. That was amazing. I am proud of myself for that. As the award ceremony begins the crowd can be heard whispering where is the champion where is Ryu where is Ryu as his admirers chant his name Ryu 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 Ryu, Ryu, already seeking the next challenge. Ceremony means nothing to him. The fight is all. <sighs> I love this ending. Just listen to the music. I really do love that ending. It's literally one of the most memorable, in my opinion, one of the most memorable uh, scenes ever in video games. It's literally one of those that, I don't know, kind of, you know, just sheds a tear, you know, every time I look at that ending and just the theme of it is just, oh my God, dude, it's one of the most memorable, in my opinion, the one of the most memorable scenes in video games ever and also in the mem most memorable in the whole series of Street Fighter. So yeah. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this playthrough. Hopefully everyone enjoyed. Um, but we are not over with the uh, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Marathon. No, we have to continue to other games. Um, I actually want to... Next one. I actually want to show off something a little bit interesting. Um... And that is Street Fighter 2 for the Game Boy.
Yes, I am literally not kidding you. I'm going to also be tackling the handheld games that released. I am not. I am. Not, I am being serious. I am doing it. Even the um, handheld games. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more of the 30th Anniversary Marathon. Next game, we'll be tackling Street Fighter 2 for the Game Boy. This has been Mysteries Pinoza X saying good night, good morning, good day. Whatever time you guys are watching this video, I will see you guys on the next one. Alright everyone, bye.